Chapter 7 And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Chislu. When they had sent unto the house of God Sherezer and Regamelech and their men to pray before the Lord, and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of the Lord of hosts, and to the prophet, saying, should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I have done these so many years? Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? And when ye did eat, and when ye did drink, did not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Should ye not hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and in the cities thereof round about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain? And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and true mercy and compassions every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refused to hearken, and pulled away the shoulder, and stopped their ears, and that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as adamant stone, lest they should hear the law, and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it has come to pass that as they, he cried, and they would not hear. So they cried, and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, and no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. There are some particular chapters in the Bible, and some particular acts by certain types of people that cause me to chuckle, because it shows just how two-faced these people are, although they wouldn't necessarily want you to think that. If you've got a prophet of God who can tell you exactly what the Lord wants you to know, is ask yourself this question. Is there any reason why you wouldn't want to go and ask him a question? And the answer is, uh, if you wanted the real answer, you'd go ask the man who could find out for sure. But, if you didn't really want to get the real answer, you might ask somebody else who might give you a different answer. And so, what happens here is somebody decides that they don't necessarily want the Lord's answer. They maybe want something that's a little different. Several men show up to talk to Joshua and get from Joshua an answer to the question. Now, Chris, they could have gone to Zechariah. I suppose they could have gone to Haggai if he was there at the time. But why bother the prophet? The guy's busy, right? I mean, he's talking with God all the time. You know, he wouldn't want to necessarily bother him, right? We'll talk to Joshua. He's the guy in charge of the temple. And, uh, you know, well, he'll give us a good answer. We can follow what he wants. So they ask Joshua this question. And you, it's really neat how the question is phrased. You need to understand this background of this, of verses, chapter, verses 5 and chapters 8 through 19, that they had four feasts. Feasts. I mean... To me, a feast is like a party, right? And I, I, maybe I'm viewing this a little wrong, but if, you, if you're going to afflict yourselves, you have a fast. If you have a feast, that's when you're eating and drinking stuff. So, when they were in Babylon, they established, Jews established four feasts. In the tenth month, they established a feast to celebrate, mark, whatever, the start of the siege of Jerusalem. The fourth month, they had, I remember the siege went on for a long time. The fourth month, they had a feast to mark the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. In the third month, they had another feast to mark the destruction of the temple. And in the seventh month, they had a feast <laughs> to, 
to celebrate the assassination of Gedaliah, who was the puppet king that was put on the throne by Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> just somebody just decided here they're going to do these things, right? Now, these are part of their religious feasts. And they go to Joshua and they say, basically, well, the fellow says, you know, for the whole 70 years that we were in Babylon, we celebrated these. Should I separate myself and continue to weep in these times and all the rest of the stuff? So basically what he's asking is, well, now that we're here, right, and we're reestablishing the temple and we're reestablishing the walls of the temple, because we've done these for such a long period of time, don't you think it'd be a good idea if we continued with them? And word got to Zechariah. And he came back with the most beautiful and profound answer that also has implications in your life and in my life. And he basically just chewed them out for being real hypocrites. Total degenerate hypocrites. Excuse me, he said to these people. Who do you think you're having some impact on with your feasting and your drinking? It's because that's what happens when you have a feast you have. You're feasting, you're eating food, you're drinking food. In essence, you're having a food party, if nothing else. Do you think that you shoving food in your face is having any impact, any good impact on God? Is it making you any more Christ-like, any more righteous? Duh! Is it? And of course, the reason they didn't ask him was they didn't want to get that kind of answer. And he points out that the Lord doesn't care for their fasting. It's totally irrelevant to him. It is, in effect, hypocrisy. It's got nothing to do with their religion. It isn't anything he instituted. He told them when he wanted them to fast and when he wanted them to feast and how he wanted them to do it. None of these four things that, he, that they established were things he established. He was not interested in their fasting. He wanted them to have pity on the people who were poor and downcast and needed. He wanted to have mercy on those people who needed to have mercy. He wanted to have justice. Instead of trying to lay traps and take advantage of one another, he wanted their righteousness. And righteousness was far, 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 far more important to the Lord than any of these stupid fasts they were going to have which meant absolutely nothing to him. He wanted their righteousness. Zechariah also pointed out that in the entire 70 years that they had been away from Jerusalem and for the vast majority of time they had been around Jerusalem, none of their fasts, none of their feasting, had been in celebration for anything the Lord had done for them. Now the question for you and me is when we decide we're going to have a fun time, we're going to do something wonderful, are we going to remember who made that possible? Are we going to remember the individual that gave us breath, that gave us life, that sustained us, that saw to it that we didn't die in that accident some years ago, that saw to it that the people that we love the most came into our lives, that saw to it that basically every bit of good that has ever happened to us, happened to us, and we're alive to tell about it. Are we ever going to be sufficiently thankful that we can spend time and celebrate the fact that the Lord has blessed us? That's what Zechariah told these people they needed to do. And that's what we can learn from this chapter.